Hello, hi everyone. Welcome back to Wu Can Cook. My name is Wesley, and this is a show where we are slowly cooking our way through all of the food from my childhood. Today, we're diving back into our series dedicated to classic Americanized Chinese cuisine with a look at the chow mein noodles from Panda Express. For those new to the channel, in this series, we have been deconstructing classic dishes from Americanized Chinese cuisine, not unlike the plethora of dishes from the Panda Express menu, then seeing what they might look like if we were to reconstruct them through the lens of more traditional wok cooking. In more recent memory, this has tended to be really interesting to break down dishes like general chicken or Beijing beef, where the dish has no real foundation in Chinese cuisine and instead really just originates from American cuisine because frequently we end up with really wild and unique results. For our chow mein today, however, obviously this dish has roots all throughout Chinese cuisine, meaning that we are for the most part going to be taking a look at what makes Panda Express's chow mein unique. And make no mistake, it definitely is unique, so that we may construct our own attempt at this dish. So, for those who have somehow never encountered this dish before, chow mein is a noodle dish of Chinese origin that makes use of thick round egg noodles that have been fried in a wok with a variety of proteins and veggies for a crisp and smoky texture. As with many stir-fried dishes, there is absolutely quite a bit of leeway in what you may choose to add to your own chow mein. Fundamentally, however, the dish must contain two elements, the first being these thick round egg noodles known as lo mein, and the second being a marinade to the noodles to yield the texture and flavor that we all know and recognize from, well, every chow mein that you've ever had. Okay, so let's get into it. Okay, so kicking things off here first, with our best attempt at reproducing the Panda Express chow mein, I'm starting off with some core aromatics to form the baseline of umami for our dish today. This is four cloves of crushed and minced garlic to start, followed by one inch or about one tablespoon of fine minced ginger. Then diving right into our veggies next, now a quick look at the Panda Express version of chow mein will tell you that there is fundamentally not a lot going on in their chow mein, mainly a handful of filler veggies with little to no protein involved. I believe that this is actually because their chow mein is really designed to be a side dish to go along with their fried chicken and or stir fried dishes, meant to be interchangeable with their fried and or steamed rices. So this means that for our veggies today, we're going with a couple of filler veggies. This is half of a medium white onion, large diced with the root end still attached as always, followed next by three stalks of celery with the tip and tail ends removed, then snapped in half so that we can pull off these stringy bits here. Finally, last up, rounding out our veggies for our third and final filler veggie. This is a quarter head of Napa cabbage that I'm chopping up, then giving a quick rinse to here. As with lettuce, cabbage heads are often literally filled with dirt and bugs, so do yourself a favor and, you know, actually wash this stuff. Moving on to our sauce element next, we're keeping things fairly simple here for our Panda Express version today, mainly leaning into the malted sweetness that I personally think is one of this dish's more defining qualities. This is four tablespoons of soy sauce here to start, followed by a single tablespoon of dark soy sauce and two tablespoons each of Shaoxing wine and brown sugar. Pretty much all of these ingredients are in some form going to be contributing a bit of sweetness to our noodles today, which I love. Next, over on the stove, I've got a pot of water at a rolling boil, then I'm adding 8 ounces of fresh lo mein egg noodles to boil for about 2 minutes. Once our noodles are cooked, I'm giving them a quick rinse in cold water to halt the cooking process, then straining and adding to a large mixing bowl so that we may, as promised, marinate our noodles. I'm doing this today with 4 tablespoons of soy sauce and 2 tablespoons of toasted sesame oil, the latter of which is going to be the key ingredient to get our noodles to fry up properly. Over on the stove, I have my wok heating up as hot as possible, then I'm adding 4 tablespoons of peanut oil and, as always, la miao for that nice non-stick surface. Then up first, here's my noodles going in, which we're frying with fairly constant agitation for about 3 to 4 minutes until they start to develop some nice crisped up edges. Then next, we're doing a bit of batch cooking. I'm removing my noodles from the wok, reheating, then adding just 2 tablespoons of peanut oil here and giving one more long yao. 
Diving into our veggies next, I'm starting off with my garlic and ginger for about 15 seconds until nice and fragrant, followed next by my celery and onions, which I'm frying up for about one to two minutes until just slightly past their raw stage. Then I'm adding my noodles back to the wok, followed by my cabbage and our sauce about a quarter cup at a time, being very careful not to over season here as I go. I'm tossing this all to combine, then we're ready to eat. Okay, so as I said earlier, this is about as simple as a bowl of chow mein can get. Just about every vegetable that we've used here is a filler veggie, meaning that they don't substantially add much texture or flavor to the dish at all, and are really just meant to, I guess, stretch the noodles a bit farther, kind of similar to how you might use cabbage in a dumpling filling. True to form, I believe this is almost exactly how the Panda Express chow mein comes together on their menu as well, which if I'm being honest, is pretty unremarkable even as far as Chinese lunch counter chow mein's go. Maybe the one saving grace here that I will mention is that our dark soy sauce is doing quite a bit to add some nice depth of flavor and complex sweetness that I think pairs really nicely with the fragrant and aromatic nature of that sesame oil in our noodle marinade. And while I do think that the simplicity of this dish works really well in context when served on the side of their other more complex stir fries like Kung Pao chicken or sizzling shrimp and so on, I think we can do at least a little bit more with our noodles here without distracting from the true intention of this dish as a side dish today. Alright, so diving into our Wu Can Cook version here, we're gonna take a few liberties with our chow mein today to help amp things up a bit. I think the biggest change that we're going to make here is that we're going to swap out those filler veggies with some bok choy and bean sprouts, which are going to give us a little bit more variation in texture and fragrance. So up first here once again are our fundamental aromatic veggies. This is another four cloves of crushed and minced garlic to start, followed next by one inch or about one tablespoon of fine minced ginger. Then next, as promised, moving on to our veggies, this is about 4 ounces of baby bok choy that I'm slicing into quarters before similarly rinsing off as well. Bok choy, in my opinion, is one of the more iconic aromatic veggies in Chinese cooking for the fragrant qualities that release as soon as they make contact with wok heat. So, I think these are going to do a lot more for us than the celery and cabbage of our Panda Express version, which basically tastes like nothing. Next up, this is two medium chicken thighs that I'm similarly large dicing as well, then marinating with a very simple marinade of four tablespoons of soy sauce, followed by a half teaspoon each of white pepper and cornstarch. As is often the case with chicken in stir fries, I wouldn't necessarily say that this is a mandatory ingredient for our Wu Can Cook chow mein here, since we have many other vegetables going on as well. But I will say that as we sear this chicken in the wok later on, it's going to give us a nice opportunity to grab some wok hay, which in turn is going to yield a much smokier quality to our final dish. Moving on to our sauce element next, my focus here is mainly on developing a more complex palette to our chow mein today by incorporating first some deeper and more rich qualities of umami, as well as some layers of heat too. So up first here once again is 4 tablespoons of soy sauce to start, followed next by a tablespoon each of black vinegar and oyster sauce. This is where our qualities of deep and rich umami are going to come from today. Next up, this is 2 tablespoons of Shaoxing wine, followed by our heat elements next. This is a single tablespoon of doubanjiang and 2 tablespoons of chili crisp oil. Moving on to our noodles here, I have once again par-cooked my lo mein to package instruction, then I'm marinating it with a tablespoon of dark soy sauce this time, followed again by 2 tablespoons of toasted sesame oil to round it all out. Over on the stove, I have my wok heating up as hot as possible, then I'm adding 4 tablespoons of peanut oil and giving one more long yao. Then next going in first are my noodles, which I'm frying for about 3 to 4 minutes until nice and crisped up on the edges. You might notice that our dark soy sauce is coming into play at this point, yielding a much darker and more rich noodle already. Then next I've removed my noodles, reheated my wok over medium heat this time, added an additional 4 tablespoons of peanut oil, followed by one more long yao. Then next is our chicken, which I'm searing for about 2 minutes undisturbed before tossing and tilting the wok down towards the open flame so that we may catch a bit of wok hay. Then next I'm shifting everything to one side so that we can add our garlic and ginger to the wok with nice solid contact to the wok surface as I do so. 
I'm blooming this for about 15 seconds until nice and fragrant, before adding in my bok choy next, which I'm giving a quick 2 minute toss to until nice and fragrant as well. Next, here's my noodles going back into the wok, followed by about 4 ounces of fresh bean sprouts. Finally, I'm adding my sauce mixture here about a quarter cup at a time, then tossing everything to combine before removing from heat. Finally, I'm optionally finishing this all off with a pinch of dried fried onion, and we're ready to eat. Okay, so first off, let's start off by addressing a few elements that we've improved upon here. I went ahead and pulled out all of those filler veggies that don't particularly contribute anything to the dish, and replaced them with some bean sprouts and baby bok choy, which are doing quite a bit more. Our bean sprouts add a really interesting complementary texture to our noodles that do well in offsetting the rich and bold qualities of that dark soy sauce marinade. Then our bok choy is bright and aromatic and is just fundamentally a much more interesting addition of vegetable to our dish. Finally, to round this out, I think the wok hay that we managed to get from our chicken is giving us a nice smoky quality to the dish that helps us lean a bit more into the deep and bold qualities of umami that we have already created. Finally, the last bit that I'll mention is that we have also done a fairly decent job of not straying too far from the original side dish intention of our chow mein here, and I think we've kept things simple enough without an overwhelming number of proteins and vegetables, so that it can be served on the side with another stir-fry without becoming too distracting too. Okay, so that's it everyone. I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you give this one a shot. For those who are new to the channel, this one is part of a larger series that we've been doing that's dedicated to reproducing classic Chinese American dishes, including a whole bunch of stuff from the Panda Express menu, so definitely check out that series next if you haven't yet because there's a lot of these. For the Bay Area locals, the Wu Can Cook Fried Rice Pop-Up is now at Wondrous Brewing in Emeryville every Thursday through Sunday, so come by and say hi then if you can. More about that at wucancook.com slash eats. Also, if you haven't seen it yet, we've got t-shirts. I'm super excited to be partnering with my good friends at Polywog Prints to make these super sweet Wu Can Cook shirts. They're really soft and comfortable, and also there's a picture of me on the back, which is crazy. We're selling these at the Wu Can Cook pop-up, or you can head over to wukancook.com slash shop to grab one from the online store too. As always, like, comment, subscribe, share, be nice interneters, and I'll see you soon. Bye. Do you?